Hey there, before we get into this pastel month tutorial, I want to let you know that my soft pastel for beginners course is 50% off now through the end of September 2022. So check it out if you are interested. There'll be a link and coupon code in the video description. Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. In today's lesson, we are going to paint a bouquet of autumn flowers that I picked up at a local farm stand. Um, so I'm gonna start off, and it's a, it's a jar, it was a spaghetti sauce jar with flowers in it, $5, man. Let me just give you my money, I said. <laughs> and I bought a really pretty bouquet. Um, I'm gonna start off just by sketching, and I'm gonna do the whole thing, I think, in these Soho pastels. I had a really good time using them the other day, and um, I wanted to give them another go. And I'm gonna start by sketching, let's see, we actually have a flower that's just off center. It's probably our most dominant flower, and it's a big sunflower, so I'm just gonna put in a, uh, a circle to represent where that's going to be. Got another one that's kind of uh, down over here, facing down, and then I've got the back side of one kind of just kind of over here to the edge. Now, I didn't tape down my paper because I'm going to do a technique here where we just kind of have a very painterly background vignette, and we're not going to be going near the edges, so that's why I'm not taping it down this time. I can bring that actually a little bit bigger. Um, I'm putting my pastels kind of on their end, as I uh, as I use them, just so I'll know what I used. Get those little flowers there. Um, oh, this color is pretty. I think I'd actually rather have some of that in there. I like that. Um, I want to get the jar in before we get too ahead of ourselves. And um, even though it's a uh, just a regular spaghetti sauce jar, I think I'll do something a little bit more. Um, I really love those those ball jars, those those blue vintage ball canning jars. So I think that's what I'll I'll use my inspiration. Plus the tealy blue is going to make the oranges, the reddish oranges, kind of really pop because it's a complementary color. So I'm just going to put a kind of a rectangle in there to. Uh, to signify that. Uh, I don't ever, like, I'm not really great at lettering, but I like to get just some bit of detail in there. And then I like to flip it upside down and see how out of whack it is. It's actually not too bad. And I'm gonna correct any distortion I'm seeing, because I have this, um, the actual bouquet is sitting on the uh, pastel drawers in front of me. So uh, I took a picture of it. Hopefully I will remember to throw it in the, um, throw it up on the screen. If not, I will put it on my Instagram and on my blog so that you can, you can have that little bit of flare there. All right. Um, let's see, there's some lavender, which is really, really pretty. Um, and it smells really good. I was like, oh my gosh, that's real lavender. I could smell it. I could smell the bouquet. And I was like, ooh, that's nice. That smells so good. And I'll be going for more of like a um, impressionistic treatment of this. When I draw my different lines, I try to keep them within, like inside of where I want them to eventually end up because that gives me a... Um, uh, it gives me a good, um, it gives me a good kind of placing them, uh, assigning them real estate, but also I know that I'll be able to, I'll go over that, that line just a little bit so I won't just have the line hanging out and I won't have to erase. So this is the vignette technique I want to share. And really, I mean, you can pull any colors you like, but I'm going to go with some gray and then I'll pull in some purples because we have so much purple in there, plus I think that will be nice for the orange. So I'm, I am snapping the stick in half. The only dustiness I've noticed with these Soho Pastels is the um, is when I break them. Other than that, they're very smooth, they're very nice, and, um, and I'm really enjoying, enjoying using them. I'm going to put some of that in the jar itself. The gray, I think, is going to work out well. If you look um, on my, my reference photo, you're going to see that <laughs> the uh, 
what you really see in the background is just like, you know, my supplies, because I'm in the in my storage room, the room of hoard, as I affectionately affectionately call it. Uh, so it's definitely um, it's kind of kind of messy. Maybe I'll throw in a little bit of the yellow ochre down here because I do have that on my on my pastel drawers. I kind of let the colors blend themselves out with like rather than adding more color on there I'm kind of just letting the the friction of one pastel over another pastel do the blending I'm gonna want that background kind of just uh very painterly and and um and loose And I'm just trying to think what other colors I might want to have in there. Maybe like um, maybe some sort of blue. Maybe I'll go with something like this. A blue like this, this light periwinkle. It almost looks like daylight, like natural um, uh, daylight blue. So I'm gonna throw a little bit of that in there too, because I think this would be a really useful color to have as far as like highlights and stuff. And don't be afraid to break your sticks. Um, one of the reasons I love to use um, half sticks is because we're already halfway there, right? So you don't have as much uh, preciousness around them. Look at how pretty that is when you blend it in with the purple. And I do want to go cut slightly into the um, uh, I want to cut slightly into my picture so that I've got um, so I won't have a gap. I won't have a gap when I when I go to these feel really smooth. When I go to color uh, other things in there, I won't have a gap. I think I want a little bit more yellow, maybe over near the purple. If you want to do some blending, you can, but um, if I'm going to do any blending of this, what I would do is I would put, I would just kind of blend maybe inward just so I don't have a gap here. But I would leave those strokes at the edge, just kind of there doing doing their thing. Cause I love to see, I like seeing the grain of the paper there. I think that's kind of like a spontaneous look and I don't want that all to be, to be smooth. I'll put some of that blue in there for my fingers. Okay, so we've got a little bit of a black background. We've got things um, uh, assigned, and now we're gonna paint this kind of in one layer. So we're not gonna get too fussy about anything. Um, I'm gonna start with the bottom of my jar here. Just try to define it a bit. If you don't like this chunky way of working and you wanna go with a, with a pastel pencil or a new pastel, something a little bit skinnier or a square pastel that's got an edge on it, you certainly can do that. Um, and you know, we all have our own ways of doing things. I prefer a looser approach in general, so that's how I'm gonna paint. I'm gonna get some stems. Just gonna put um, also just some color. Uh, oh, this is a pretty one. You don't have to put every stem in there. If I'm just using the edge of something, I don't need to use the use the whole uh, side. I uh, will go ahead and just leave it wrapped for now. So you don't need to break every them every one, you know. And if you're painting with a different set of pastels, which I assume you probably are, then you can go ahead and use the closest colors that you have. I'm gonna get that waterline, a little shadow under that and pull down some of those stems. I'm gonna tap this off in the trash because that edge of the pastel had quite a bit of breakage, not breakage, but crumbling. 
sometimes it happens, especially with a new uh, new set. Now I'm going to blend this part kind of up into the flower area just because it is more of a shadow. It's less defined. I like the combination of having some hard and soft lines. I know I probably blend a little bit more than a lot of colored pencil artists, but you do you do you. You do what you like. There's a directness to the media that I really like. I used to work in pastels more when my kids were babies, mostly because there was no fumes. And um, when I needed to put it away, I would just, you know, slide it under my bed and because uh, I would paint during their nap times. So it's actually really convenient for that. Now, any colors that you're putting in the jar, like stems and whatnot, you can like throw around as reflections. Uh, well, I've got this color out. I think I'll get the center in this. In that flower. I'm going to do the center in this one, too. This one, you're kind of going to see it from the back side, and you're going to see the pretty kind of like texture of those back green uh, staples. Uh, I think they're called at the back of a flower. Get a little bit of yellow ochre stippling in there. It's actually some really vibrant yellow, uh, much warmer. Well, not warmer, but it's a warm yellow. It's just very bright around the center. So what I want to do here really is capture that texture. And here I see it in the middle. But then I do have kind of like a rim, a rim of yellow here. It goes into kind of like a rosy brown peach color. And I just kind of jump around. Um, I jump around by what uh, what inspires me. Actually, this color here is very similar to what what the petals are on this sunflower. So I'm not going to paint every petal, but I just kind of want to get that gesture of the way they're curved. And then I'm going to go back, um, it's actually more of a yellow ochre here on the outside of those petals and just kind of bring a little form. And this is a, another one of those reasons I like to, um, I'm kind of blending with the stick here, uh, why I like to put all my pastels right side up in the, um, or on their ends in the box while I'm working because then I remember like what I've used. So if I put the lavender in and some leaves and stuff and it's like, oh, I need to sharpen this area up again. I know which color I likely used for that because it's, it's standing on its end. And that keeps me from grabbing something that's way off in left field. And I think I might punch that up with a little bit of this more um, kind of whiny purple, kind of like a Bordeaux color. And I love the sketchiness of that. If you don't, you want to refine, you want to use little uh, blenders, something like that, you absolutely can. The I'm just going to show you different techniques so that you can get the um, the look that you want from your from your pastels. At least that's my hope anyway. I hope that's the way it goes. So lavender has these little bitty like um, it's almost like little husks. And they almost go to like a silvery, uh, a silvery gray green color. And I'm just going to see if I have something similar to that here. I think I probably could actually use this. Yep, that works. You're not going to often find the exact color you need. 
especially if you're working with a limited supply. And if you look at like people that do pastel as their main artwork, or they've been doing pastel for a long time, you're going to see they have like trays three times the size of this that are just crammed right in with with every shade imaginable. Um, and you know, you build your collection over time and then you end up with all of those colors. Um, so then they'll just grab just the color that they need. But until you get to that point, um, or maybe you don't want to get to that point. It's not that you don't have to. Um, you know, you'll pick a close color and then maybe overlap a couple colors and get what you need to. So um, don't feel like you have to have, you know, this huge arsenal of supplies. Now there's this little, I think it's a mum back here that's got these purple. I'm going to redefine these guys. Uh, so I'm going to get that in there. It's like I don't want to miss a flower. They're so pretty. Um, and then they actually have kind of a golden uh, golden ochre center with a little bit of green in there. So I'll go in and put that one in because I can see. That's the only center of this type of flower I can see. And we'll do a little bit of uh, that darker kind of sap green color. And... I've got a very prominent leaf there that I like the look of, so I want to get that in. Probably a sunflower leaf for the size of it. Um, let's see. I always feel like we need more purple. I don't know why. It's not like purple is a is a <laughs> is like a favorite color of mine or anything but oftentimes in like sets I'm thinking oh it needs more purple and I think like like there should be some more shades of purple and I think part of that is because why it feels like it's lacking is purple is such a tricky color like in markers you could put down one color and it like it changes um I think purple dyes are very difficult to deal with and I don't think there's that many actual like light fast purple pigments so I uh, often feel like, oh, I just need a little bit more purple. And I love to add purple into my sunflower middles because it darkens it, but also makes the it makes the uh, yellows stand out more. Let's do a little bit of that sap green in the center too. And I'm gonna start to just block out this back part of this sunflower because the sunflower is kind of facing away so we see the sepals here can't really see the stem but I'm gonna put a chunky stem in there because I know it would be maybe even a leaf Alrighty, let's go ahead also and put in some of the, you don't see too much of it, but some of the uh, petals that we do see. And see, I didn't want to be bound by tape on the edges. Um, I just need to make sure I had areas that I could hang on to my picture. And uh, like, if so don't worry about these little smudges, like you might see like there where you've held down to your don't worry about that. You can remove those as long as it's not an area where, you know, you have some intentional work. You can pick up those smudges with your kneaded eraser. So I tend to do most of my blending, especially if I'm doing something like this with my right hand. So I'll use my left hand to just kind of keep that, keep that from moving around on me too much. Uh, also, if you're using like a heavier board to clip down to, that probably wouldn't be an issue. But I like to clip down to these, um, these nice panels because... They are so, they're so easy. I have so many of them. I love this blue. I just felt like playing with it some more. I don't feel like my ellipse is, is good. That's going to need a little work. <clears throat> Ooh, also some gray and some gray back there. Again, I don't like pull in my super dark colors to the end, like black. If I was going to use black, I'd wait till the end because I don't want to. Um, 
I don't want to mess anything up. I need like a light pink. I'm thinking this one might be a little too cool. You can hold up the stick in front of the thing that you're going to paint and see how it looks. Oh, I think that one might actually, because it can be very, it can be very um, deceiving. And also you might want to uh, shift the color a little bit depending on what you are painting. Well, this is going to be seen between some of the petals, so I just want to make sure I have enough of this. These teeny little pink flowers. And back to my green, to the darker one. And then I need a darker purple, like this one we've been using all along. Put the centers in, and that's just going to give your blob. A little bit of order. Maybe use this really, really light pink. because it looks almost white it's out light all right but I am going to go in with white for <clears throat> or maybe I'll go a really light yellowy peach color what's this one oh actually maybe another white let's see no the white is definitely brighter hmm I don't know if I want to pull straight white in yet <clears throat> so I'm going to use this color <clears throat> These little uh, pom pommy snowy white flowers. I'm going to grab this uh, and just kind of white again, just give it a little bit of a oomph. Give a little bit of order to those little clumps. I think I might do that with the pink as well. I'll have to unwrap it, snap it though, because it's just looking a little bit too discordant there. And the re I'm kind of waiting to do that um, focal point sunflower because um, that's going to overlap everything. So it's better to uh, do that one last. I wish these didn't come wrapped, honestly. I mean, I'm sure other people would have a different opinion, but there. Um, but I would prefer they didn't because then I wouldn't have to deal with them. Also, I find like these these do seem kind of similar to Sennelier. I did read the review that said that, and at first I thought, no, these are harder. But kind of like with Sennelier, I like the half sticks because the they're less crumbly. The ones that come full stick are wrapped, and they seem to be way more crumbly. So I don't know if it's something when they put them in the machine that wraps these, or I don't know, whenever they wrap them, it seems to make them, make them crumblier, or I don't know, maybe it has nothing to do with it, but it just seems, it seems that way. I'm going to put a little bit of detail, not much. Just a little bit on this leaf. Get a little bit of a shadow too as it's deeper in there. A little bit of highlight. There, I like that. I'm just, I, I just want kind of like little touches of detail. Going in with the darker purple that we've used elsewhere. Uh, going in with our lavender. I don't know if you're enjoying this, but I'm enjoying this. And keep in mind, like as you're working on your pastel and you may be frustrated thinking, oh, this doesn't look right. It looks just like a bunch of scribbles. Step back, go put it on easel, go set it on a shelf, 
somewhere where you can get back away from it because it, it comes together. It comes together as you get further, further away. And when you see all the textures start blending and all the colors start coming together, it's really, it's really lovely. Um, I'm going to add some green to the back of this mum. The mums will be, gosh, probably could buy mums already. I bet. Oh, there's, a, there's another little leaf here. I think it's a sunflower. I'm going to have to go a little bit darker with my greens around the sunflower. You can start to add a little bit of detail. I don't want to lose the freshness of it. This is a, well, I guess it's probably not wildflower. These were from a farm, but, but you know, that whole wildflower feeling just of being kind of loose and messy and uh, wonderful. Um, let's see. Oh, you know what? This peach would be nice, actually. Little hints of that over here. Oh, I like that. The salmon color is really pretty. Can I use a little bit of that in there, too, maybe? I think I need a little bit of this more rusty with a darker value. And maybe actually even like um it's it's looking like I need more of like a pastel yellow. The back side of the flower is not as vibrant. I know I'm thinking about that, but I'm going to leave that for right now. And uh, I think I'm going to go ahead on the main sunflower. I'm going to tip, give us a real quick flip here. First, though, try to figure out my ellipse a little bit. I really love this color. I'm itching to use it. So. Now, obviously, I can't turn my... Um, can't turn my bouquet upside down, uh, but you could turn the, the photo upside down if you want to. I love seeing that little bit of um, when light just kind of scatters on the table. It's one of my favorite things about painting glass. Okay, so I'm seeing like a little bit of a reflection back there on the table, mainly because I have um, studio lights, so it's probably not the best, uh, probably not the best thing to go by. I might actually lift a little bit of that up. There. Um, I am going to need a darker value for shadows. Oops, let's scooch that back down. Um, I don't know if I have anything that's darker than that. That's not black as far as like a neutral. I'm looking to see if I have any real dark desaturated colors that might work. Like uh, maybe a gray brown, but uh, maybe this one. So if you're trying to tell the difference between two colors, which is a darker value, kind of look and squint. These are almost the same. Uh, but maybe the color change, maybe the, val the temperature change will be enough of a... I 
So on the outside of this, you have like more shadow. Oh, I don't think I like that. I don't think I like that at all, actually. Well, you know, let's try to lift some of that off because I don't like that. I don't like that. Warmer gray. And I stop talking, it's because I'm thinking. <laughs> Under the waterline, you can have the things kind of distorted. I like that I can see some like little. leaves in there. All right, um, I'm going to tap off the dust into my trash can. And now we're going to go ahead and work on that center flower there. I'm going to start with a bright yellow coming out of the center. Then we've got um, got some orange. This is more orange than it needs to be, but I'll be layering up some brown, so I'd rather start off too bright and then let it mute out as I put in browns and stuff. Don't fret about what you have around. Just go right over it. This is pretty much... Um, Overlapping everything, it's our main focal point, I think, of the piece. Try to keep it fairly uniform. All right, now I'm going to go back with the yellow because there's a very subtle, like, tips of the petals that have the yellow on them, so... I'm going to bring those colors in. And now I'm going to go in, let's see, I'm going to look for like kind of a purpley brown. I may have to mix those colors. I probably will. So we'll go with this brown. It's kind of like a reddish brown. It's kind of in the center of these petals. And now we need something that's a little more red. Um, hmm, that might work. That's awfully red though. Well, this is a little more brown than I want, so I might have to just kind of use this to bring a little order to my petals and then go in with a, another red for an accent. And I think I need my center to be a little bit bigger. All right, I'm gonna tap this off again, right into my trash. I'm gonna pull the blend a bit in here. Use your finger, use a blending uh, applicator, it's up to you. I got, I've got been asked so many times if this paper like hurts my fingers to blend on, and it doesn't. This is a Canson XL sand grain paper. I'll link it down below. Blick has a really good price on it. I think Jerry's has a good price. Amazon is outrageous. Um, and I don't know if it's available everywhere in the world, but uh, I've... I've really enjoyed this paper. I think it's a really good value, but it's not a real sanded paper. It says sand grain on it, but it's more of like a pebbly matte board texture. So it is quite a bit different uh, than what you might expect 
hearing the word sand grain. So I just wanted to put that out there. If you're expecting this to be, you know, sanded paper, you're not going to get that. You'll probably be a little disappointed. But um, let's see. I'm bringing the texture back in. I just don't like seeing the grain of the paper in that particular area. Um, so if that's something that you're interested in, I highly recommend it. It's 40 sheets for about $7. And I really don't think you can beat that. You don't have to feel um, bad about practicing at that price. I know a lot of times we, you know, I don't know, like pastel mat, for instance, gorgeous paper. I love it, but it's so dear that I never touch it. Um, something like this. It's like, this is cheap enough that I can just fool around with like budget colored pencils or, uh, or pastels or whatever and not worry about, um, and not worry about wasting it. Um, and so I think that's something that is really worthwhile, especially as a beginner. You don't want to make your supplies so precious that you're afraid to use them. Now I'm like doing this layer where I'm going to leave some more brush strokes or, or pastel marks in but I just felt like I needed something underneath because I didn't want to see the grain on the paper of the paper in here I wanted it to be much more uh much more strong you know this is not going to give you the amount of layers that like a really rough paper will give you like a uh, sanded paper so that's something else I want to mention. I really like UART sanded paper, but there's been some controversy over whether it truly is archival or not. Um, so I don't know. It's very expensive. So if it's not, I'd be very, very bummed out about that because, I mean, I really like it. I love it because it is like sandpaper. In fact, I prefer the UART, like as far as just as like, just as my preference, not... It, all things being equal, I prefer the UART, like working on it, to the pastel mat and to this. But it's it's very expensive. Um, and it makes you kind of like, I don't know, it makes you kind of hoard it a little bit. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't anybody else. It does me anyway. All right, I'm going to need a dark value. I probably will go in with black at some point here in the not too distant future. I am using some like kind of royal purple color. I'll have a review on these Soho's coming out pretty soon. I really like them. Uh, I don't think you can find open stock colors and there's no pigment information. <laughs> Somebody said they, they have used the Jack Richardson ones and these, these are like very similar to the Jack Richardson pastels. They think they're the same thing. And it could be because these are these Soho pastels are private labeled for Jerry's Artorama and Jack Richardson private labels all kinds of things. So it could be the exact same thing. So if anybody knows, I mean, let me know because I think Jack Richardson might actually offer a private label option. Somebody asked me, how do you clean your pastels. Um, you can keep a dish of rice on your on your desk and just kind of plop them in there. Um, you can just kind of wipe them on a paper towel. I usually, like if I know it's getting dirty and I know someplace else I want to have some of that color and I want to blend it, the colors I have, I'll just go right over to those areas. I honestly don't fret about cleaning my pastels too much unless it's white and I need like a really bright highlight. But I kind of do that as I'm using it, not like before I put them away. So I guess I put them away dirty and then I go back and, and uh, clean them up at the end. That's what I'm saying. All right, so I am going to go in with some black because I do feel like I need a little more contrast in areas. Um, I feel like my vase is tipping. It looks like it in my monitor. It looks fine standing here. I'm going to tip it up. Well, maybe a little bit. Maybe a little, a little cockeyed. <laughs> This is when, when you frame it, you just go, oh, look at that. You give it a little, t little turn and all is right in the world again. <laughs> and 
all is right in the kingdom. Look at how that black just cuts through like butter, though, I mean. But I leave it to the end because it could make a mess. It could make... Um, it could make you get muddy values. It can deaden your colors. So I use it sparingly and with intention. It's not casting a really dark shadow, but I'll take the, the black on my finger and just kind of bring it out. So I kind of cross pollinate, but I'm not uh, doing too much. I just want to give it a little bit of dark in here towards the outside, maybe towards the bottom of this. Take the black on my finger, just give it a little bit in that shadow, that leaf up there. It's not gonna, it, it'll cut through, but it's not going to lay down too much because you've got uh, all those other layers of pastel. It's going to be almost acting as a resist on the paper because you're, as you fill the tooth, it just kind of, it'll kind of resist those darks. So so don't, uh, don't be afraid of that. All right, so my final step will be my white highlights. I'm going to tap off all the extra dust right into my trash. I just put this, I have a big trash can, a big opening trash can. I flip it upside down and I go whack, whack, whack. And um, and it lets it fall straight down. You can work on an easel. Like if you have a French easel, which is a kind of easel that has a drawer in it and the adjustable um, part where your picture goes, you can have it so that you can tip it and it's slightly tipping down and any dust will fall into the little lip, the little tray that holds your canvas typically. And it won't drag across itself because if you tip it so that it's like, so it's tipping down, it'll fall straight down. Um, I tend to work like this because I'm filming. And so this works for me, just kind of putting it over my trash can and giving it a good whack. So just um, kind of keep that in mind. Now here, I do have this feeling that my jar is crooked <laughs> and you guys can probably see it you know, clear as day, and I can't because I'm too close to it. But let's see, I'm thinking the light's probably coming in through here and throwing that that light that way, so... I think the uh, the key is like less. Less is more when you're doing these highlights. Oh yeah, I totally uh, made that a little wonky, but let's see if we can fix it, shall we? you will run out of your white first. And so, so you'll want to find a replacement, a, a brand that you like, that you can get a white from. Don't go and buy like chalkboard chalk in white. It's not going to be soft enough. It's going to be frustrating. Um, I would recommend if you run out of the white here, I'd actually get a Snellier because you're probably doing your whites last for highlights and um, Snellier's are softer than this, but you can get them open stock and I think you'd be really pleased with that. Now at this point, I'm still doing highlights and I've got a lot of grime on there. I would just take a paper towel or on my scrap paper that I have like here, I would just kind of do that and clean it off that way. I think a paper towel probably wastes less. So, um, but if I just keep cleaning this every time I'm using it, I'm going to waste so much. So I just wait until I'm like, okay, I need that light back again. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that now. So, you know, it's kind of like I just got into ceramics. And I was cleaning my wheel. I was taking the splash tray out and hosing it down every time I used it. And then I'm like, then I started watching some videos online. I'm like nobody else is doing that. What? A, this is probably a massive waste of time and water. <laughs> 
And so I stopped doing it, and guess what? It's still working fine, so, you know. Oh, I don't think I like that, though. Eek. Yep, I don't like the white in the flowers. We'll go over that with yellow. I'm going to pick up what white I can, because white can really cause a problem if you try to cover it up, because it just makes everything muddy. Teachable moment, we have a lot. Teachable moments, we have a lot, because I always mess up and I teach you something. Hopefully you won't make the same mistakes that I do. Yeah. <laughs> Bet you didn't think you were getting a song today. All right, we can also do a little bit of highlighting on these pretty little pink flowers that are super duper light. They can be catching a little bit of a pretty highlight. And we want to layer up a little bit um, on, like, I'm not going to bother cleaning that. I'll clean it next time I use it, you know. Uh, I think I'll layer up a little bit more in our lavender. I'm going to do that, some of that blue from the background. I'm going to let it help mix. Oh, look, I love it. I love that. So it's so pretty. I hope everything is in a nice sharp focus. I'm set, I set manual focus this time because I was, um, I've had some issues with the camera auto focusing on me and it's very frustrating to be going in and trying and editing and note and seeing that your your camera has done that. So I'm really hoping that that is better now. Some little highlights on our mums for the pink we already used. Uh, we're going to reclaim our darks here. Mm, I think I want to do something a little bit darker over there, too. Help balance it. We'll do a little bit more green just to help the opacity there. And a little bit of that darker green. I might even go in a little, little black there just to push some of that back in. There's my black. Uh, and I think maybe just a little bit of black in there. And then, like, oftentimes if I'm using the black, I'm just going to go back in with one of the colors I've used and just kind of like kind of blend it you know I'm just kind of um kind of morphing the colors together just using a using a stick I've already used that way I don't have that like really harsh black now I do want to do something I, I need some bright yellow um but I think it needs to be more pigmented than like that I don't think that's bright enough this one might be a little bit brighter let me just see I'm going to use this one, it's a little bit lighter, and I've used both of them, so so that's fair. Some stippling. And there's nothing wrong with leaving your painting to kind of sit for a bit. And then come back like a day or two later and decide that you want to do this or that to it. Um, That's totally fine. And you can, you know, approach your painting however you want. You don't have to have it loose and messy like this. You can have it much more refined. That's all about what your vision is for your artwork, not anybody else's vision. It matters what you want to see in your artwork. And I want a little bit more red in there. And I think I'll throw a little bit in there to help bring this color throughout the picture. And even a little bit in there. And probably a little, just a little smidgen in here. Um, I love that teal. I love putting these two colors together, the teal and red together, so. Mm. 
I gotta go ahead and mess, uh, figure out a way to fix the floor of that jar. It didn't look right. Then do a little color vibration here by putting this teal right up next to that reddish in the sunflower. Get those color molecules a vibrating, a moving, and a grooving. Play with contrast, play with colors, have fun. Pastel does not take forever to do. So, um, you know, so you'll have many times to try things again and go for the, uh, go for the look you want. But I'm going to call this one done. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give me a thumbs up before you go. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye.